Hey guys, this is one bad Movo bike that you're gonna wanna have in your garage. Movo. You bad Movo. Hi right, guys, I'm Johnny Nerd Out. We got another custom e-bike build today. We're gonna be going over soup to nuts what we did to this bike. This was just a standard bike. This is a KHS Movo, Movo, <laughs> Movo. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, I like to say Movo. Movo? Like, what are you looking at, Movo? We're gonna go over what we did to this and how you can build a bike like this yourself if you don't want a direct-to-consumer 90-pound behemoth that has crappy specs to it. Short range, no power, and it's super heavy, and you're gonna pay out the nose for it. So if you're like, there's gotta be something better, you came to the right channel. Check the description below if you wanna links to the direct products that we're talking about here. Um, and if you wanna book a consultation, I could help you build a bike however you want it to be. The bike at hand is the Movo. This is the 2.0. There's a 1.0 and there's the 2.0. This is a KHS bike. Um, this is a comfort cruiser. This one is, is nice. See, it's got the low step here so that you could step in, step in and out. Even with this battery here, you could easily step in and out. So if you've got leg issues and you can't quite do that anymore, you know, if you had a high step, you can't swing this around. Or if you're gonna be putting stuff on the back here, you don't wanna be going you know, gymnastic style, kicking it over, or Jackie Chan style, kicking it over there. You're like, you know what? I'm gonna make my life easy, step through. It's got this rail here, so the frame is still super, super strong. This is a nice, comfortable bike. This is for a, um, this is for a customer that is having a ship them the bike. Uh, they're gonna be using this for, I think, light, light duty hunting and fishing is what I understand. They're gonna be going just like a couple miles out, gravel roads, just want something comfortable. They're gonna be putting a front rack on it eventually, but they wanna see how this bike goes. Instead, we got the uh, Versa rack up here for now so that they can put whatever they want on there. This bike is cool because it's got 26 by 2.3 five inch tires. These are road oriented tires. So this, this is fine for like up to campground level off road hard pack dirt trails, you know, some rocks and stuff. The bigger tires are gonna act kind of like a suspension, especially if you let some of the PSI out, it's gonna absorb some, some of that rockiness. So if you want it to be a commuter, pump that PSI up to 65, which is, I think it's 35 to 65 is a PSI range. 35 is gonna be good for acting almost like a poor man's full suspension bike. 65 is gonna be great for a commuter. It's gonna be really efficient. They're fairly large size tires, these 2.35s. It's a nine speed transmission up here. Uh, nine speed Shimano transmission. I think it's got a 36 tooth for a low gear, 11 tooth for a, for a high. And we went with a 46 tooth sprocket. Now it's not like a super ideal gear ratio for super off-road hill climbs, but you'll see in the performance test, this is even, this, this was fine. The, the chain alignment, we were gonna go with like a, just a 40 tooth because he wasn't looking for top speed at all. And generally, if you want top speed, you go with a bigger sprocket. He's like, I want off-road capabilities. So we're like, oh, let's go with like a 40 tooth then. That should be good. But the chain line was kind of wonky and we could have put a Lecky 40 tooth on it, but that's 200 bucks plus. And that would have brought the chain line in really good again. But you know, if you if you need it, there's always options. But you know, he's like, I. He just, he's just not looking for that kind of performance. And this is great as it is. So why spend the money if you don't need to? The, the Movo 2.0 is an upgrade over the 1.0. So it uses hydraulic brakes. So these are the Shimano hydraulic brakes. It has the nine speed drivetrain. Just a little bit better performance. I kind of like this one a little bit better over the 1.0. I built up the 1.0 before as well. I think just having the hydraulic brakes and uh, the nine speed might be worth it. For battery, we went 52 volt, 14 amp hour Slim Shark pack. Uh, he wanted to have a lot of power, so we went with the Bafang BBS HD 1000 watt. Uh, this is a 68 millimeter, fits perfectly. You want reliability? Go Bafang BBS HD. This is the older UART style. I still have these in stock. I don't know what year you're watching this though, so if this is 2032, if you're still alive, tell the human race I said hello and that we're probably out of stock on the UART versions. We added a kickstand to it, we went with the Greenfield mid-mount kickstand, and we added the Planet Bike extra large saddle. You wanted something comfy up here. And this does have a bell on it. Ice cream for sale. Oh no, my basket of ice cream fell off. Okay, so up front we got the 600C color display. I like this display. 
shows you everything that you need. If, if somebody's like, what display should I get? He usually started about the 600C or the 500C if you wanted to be a little bit smaller, but the 600C just, it looks sharper. It looks like it's 21st century. The 500C just looks a little outdated. Still says most of the same information, just a little bit smaller. So if you want smaller, go 500C. If you want something nicer and bigger, 600C is a very nice display, unless you want USB charging and all that, then look at a different one. He also wanted a full twist grip throttle. So this, this is the twist grip throttle. And this is nice because it has pretty good actuation. I can make this spin really slow and I can make it go slowly, slowly, slowly. Like it actually has good uh, actuation, I guess, for the lack of a better word. Um, the thumb throttle, the stock thumb throttle is okay. It's more of an on off. It's got like three degrees. This has got a really good gradation though, I would say of, I could go really slow. So if you're looking for full control, this is nice. And it's like a $25, $30 upgrade. So it's, this is a, a, a nice throttle to have. Unless you want to go full on with the pacemaker, but that's well over $100. Okay, anyways, without further ado, let's go do some performance tests. Let's go check uh, top speed and we're going to do a hill climb test. Okay, so you can see uh, 38 miles an hour, this thing flies, this thing grooves, and hill climb tests. This thing, obviously this is not the ideal gear ratio. This is a massive front, this is a 46 tooth. If you went down to like a 36 tooth, this thing would absolutely fly up that hill. But even with this non-ideal gear ratio, this mid-drive got up there no problem. I mean, it was slow, but it was chug-a-lugged up there, no problem. There is no hub motor under, Probably, I would even say 4,000 watts that can get up a hill like that. But this motor, chugging along at about 1,700 watts in not the ideal gear ratio, got up there pretty much no problem. Trying to think of any other thing. If you got any questions about this build, message me below. If you want me to build a bike like this to you and ship it to you, we do that. We are an in-house bike shop. We have access to these bikes. We're a KHS dealer. We got we're dealerships with a lot of other bikes. So if you see a bike that you like, you can always ship us your bike too. We do a lot of that too. So feel free to contact us, head to johnnynerd.com. If you need all your help for building your custom e-bikes, uh, happy to help you out. Later, Quaid.